Nation in Brady's first season. Before that, it had been a few years since uh, the Dukes had knocked anyone off in the tournament. It was 2003 when JMU beat Towson 72-61. So um, their first win in a little while in the CAA tournament. That win over William & Mary was 70-48 before falling in the second round to George Mason, 61-53. So... Uh, Despite the fact that Drexel has taken both of these matchups, you have to be wary of Denzel Bowles if you're the Dragons. Denzel Bowles is, without a doubt, one of the most phenomenal players in this league this season. Would have been the league's leading scorer. Didn't play in enough games overall. Just under 75%, which is what's needed to be considered in the top of the rankings. So Bowles, without a doubt, one of the most dangerous big men in this league. And he's going to do the jumping here for the Dukes. Bowles, 6'10", 255. It's starting for the Dukes along with Ben Louis, Julius Wells, Devon Moore, uh, excuse me, uh, Trayvon Flores, and Pierre Curtis on the other side for Drexel. Gerald Colds, Jamie Harris, Derek Thomas, Daryl McCoy, and Sammy Givens. Harris for long range. He misses. McCoy tries to go up top for the rebound. No good. And Colds. Gerald Colds goes up strong, the smallest guy in the pack, and he has the opportunity to put the Dragons up 3-0 with the N1. And that bucket resulted just on the sheer fact that JMU was not able to prevent Drexel from staying off the offensive glass. Good work down low by Ger Gerald McCoy down low, getting that offensive board and kicking it outside. And then Cole's able to get it the second time and put it up, unable to convert on the one on the N1. It'll be Pierre Curtis running the point for the Dukes. Sensational senior for James Madison University. Ben Louis goes to his right, finds Trayvon Flores, back to Wells at the top of the key. Louis tries to go baseline, gets trapped, blocked off right there by Sam Givens. Wells finds Bowles off the post. Goes over the block, no good over McCoy. That ball rolls outside and it's Pierre Curtis. He's made five starts. This is his sixth career against Drexel. Junior from Denver, Colorado. Finds Bowles along the baseline. Bowles loses, or Bowles loses control, finds Wells, it's poked out of bounds. Good defense there by Thomas to knock that ball out of bounds. Excuse me, that was, it was Derek Thomas. Good job on by him, knocking the ball out of De Julius Wells' hands there along the sideline right there in front of the Drexel bench. Bowles now, off the block, working strong. Can't get any inside leverage, so he tries to find Ben Louis, and that one's going to go out of bounds off Louis and to the Dragons. It's good vision, though, by the big man. Haven't seen Ben Louis cutting along the baseline. Just couldn't get the bounce to come up high enough. Got Louis in the knee there. Sammy Gibbons now swings the ball over to Thomas. Thomas, kick ball now. It's going to be Julius Wells kicking it. Ball will stay with the Dragons. 27 seconds on the shot clock. And uh, what do you make of Drexel so far being the aggressor in the higher seed? You never want to get upset on a Friday. And so if, if you're the higher seed, do you think they've come out loose enough? I think so. They, they seem to be playing with a lot of swagger right now. And they're really trying to take it to James Madison right now. And that's really going to be the key, especially with McCoy and Givens battling down low with Bowles and Flores. That is going to be just key all night is how those big men battle down low. Harris penetrates from the side, gets in. That one's no good, and it's rebounded by Flores. Wells looks to push the break. He pulls up just inside the arc, finds Louis. Over to Bowles. The ever dangerous Denzel Bowles spots up, and that shot is short. And Pierre Curtis tipped it out of bounds. Ball will go to the Dragons. And those Drexel Dragons have taken 14 out of 15 all time matchups against these two schools since Drexel joined the CAA in 2001. It's probably something James Madison's trying to shrug off, not think about too much coming into this ballgame. Thomas makes good on the 15-footer there right from the stripe. So 4 nothing. Drexel off to a, a quick start. JMU, though, yet to register points. Haven't gotten on the board yet, but Pierre Curtis looking to change that right now. Very, very good senior. And really the only veteran leadership that this Dukes team has. Pierre Curtis is really going to have to be big. Nice backdoor cut by Julius Wells. So JMU finally cracks the scoring column two and a half minutes into this game. Sammy Givens. Finds his man over there, Colts, Colts, over to Harris, to McCoy. Playing a little bit outside of his home. Sammy Givens is locking down the post. Colts now along the perimeter. Goes down low, he's cut off. JMU using their size inside. Mid-range shot is no good right there. 
from Thomas, and we're going to have a foul. Sammy Givens with the arm bar there. Tried to get a little too aggressive down low. Just wasn't able to get away with uh, trying to grab that offensive board. But the Ducks are really working hard on the offensive glass right now, trying to make sure that they get as many second chance opportunities as humanly possible. Pierre Curtis will be the man running the point. One of the better point guards in the CAA, no doubt. Curtis gets it back. Finds Bowles. Bowles loses control of it, and it's going to be Harris who comes away with it, leading the break. No numbers for Drexel, however. Tries to cut inside. Harris goes high off the glass. That one doesn't draw any iron, and it's out of bounds to JMU. Go back down to that last possession. McCoy did a tremendous job there, just reaching in and poking that ball away from Denzel Bowles. Bowles just not able to protect the ball enough, and the veteran McCoy, or excuse me, freshman McCoy really doing a good job banging down low with the big man, Denzel Bowles. McCoy, the freshman for Drexel, right there with his uh, teammate Chris Fouch as a couple of impact players as uh, Derek Thomas picked up a foul for Drexel. That's the second team one to go against the Dragons. Both of these teams are very young, very inexperienced, a lot of freshmen, only one senior on the floor right now, and that's Pierre Curtis. So if anybody's going to step up and be the leader on this floor tonight, it's going to have to be Pierre Curtis. And we've seen it out of him a few times this season, and he really is going to need to be that guy tonight. Denzel Bowles, who's yet to really get inside, loses the ball again. It's Colds who comes away with it, finds Harris on the wing. Colds gets it back, and the Dragons will settle down a little bit. Run a little bit of a set offense right here. That's three turnovers now by Denzel Bowles here in the first four minutes of this ball game. Down low, no room for Givens, so he finds Colds on the outside, and Bowles has looked a little bit erratic, yet to score. Not able to do a whole lot down low, and got to give McCoy a lot of credit for that here early in this ball game. Harris wildly goes up, and that ball will not drop, and so he will step to the line, however. It'll be a two-shot foul. Two shots right there. Coming up uh, as Drexel will look to stretch the lead to four points. Timeout on the floor. Four to two is your score. So a little bit low scoring through the first segment. We're going to be right back here to the um, Virginia 529 College Savings Plan CAA Men's Basketball Tourney right here on CAAsports.com. here in coverage of the Virginia 529 College Savings Plan Tournament. And Jamie Harris has done a great job of getting to the rack, as you see right there. He wasn't able to pick up the bucket that time, but he did draw the foul as he'll step to the line for a pair, looking for his fourth points of the ball game. And Jamie Harris, an 82% free throw shooter for the season, doing a really good job at the line. He's actually the Dragons' leading scorer, 14 and a half points for the regular season. Harris is a really, really good point guard. Doesn't let the size factor in at all does a really good job getting to the rack and gets himself to the line able to hit his free throws and that's what you need out of a point guard to correct myself that's actually uh, his first points right there knocked both free throws down and uh, JMU once again is struggling going through that first media break without uh, more than one bucket as Ben Louis tries to rush up court to get 
some kind of momentum going right here for the Dukes. But it's down low, especially, you really got to hand it uh, to McCoy and the job he's done so far. Working on over two minutes now since JMU's been able to put any points on the board. See if Pierre Curtis and Julius Wells can get anything moving for him. Well, spinning inside goes up in a beautiful little touch there from Julius Wells. Making good on his uh, second bucket of the game. So he's got all four points for the Dukes. And Wells listed as the third leading scorer in the conference at 16.4 for the season. That's not counting in, of course, Denzel Bowles' stats for the year, but Julius Wells really has been a key cog in this JMU attack all season long. A little bit of around the horn action for Drexel. It's gonna be Harris right now, looking for help from Thomas. He gets it, Thomas from long range, knocks that one down. So eight to four, Drexel has uh, doubled up JMU thus far. It was close to a three, but uh, foot was right there by the line. So eight four, Drexel leads. Derek Thomas already was four points now early in this ball game. Doing a really nice job getting his open looks and hitting the shots when he's got the look. Luis stumbled as he came across there, looking for the ball. Wells is the man with it now. Finds Louis on the wing. Louis runs into a wall right there of McCoy and Thomas. Flores trying to find an open bowls and Gibbons helps out. From the left wing right there, it's Ben Louis barely drawing iron. Pierre Curtis grabs the offensive board but loses control. JMU will keep the ball, however, down low. Good help defense there by Sammy Gibbons and McCoy collapsing on the big man Denzel Bowles, not letting him get that easy layup underneath the bucket. They are really doing a good job collapsing on him and not letting him play his game. And really, this is the first time uh, in quite some time that we've seen Denzel Bowles stymied early. Yeah, we saw him a few weeks ago when uh, JMU was down at VCU, down at the Siegel Center, and Denzel Bowles just lit it up that night. We just got to see firsthand how sensational of a player this transfer is. Wells misses from long range as Matt Parker has come in to spell Denzel Bowles. So the big man will take a seat on the bench for the time being. And we get our first glimpse of Chris Fouch, newly named CAA Rookie of the Year. He's on the court for the first time. And Fouch, the second leading scorer on this Drexel team at 11 points a game. And he is a very dangerous three-point threat. Cole's hack baseline loses the ball, but Givens gets it and goes up, and it's good. Sammy Givens. And uh, Chris Fouch, heck of a sixth man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you couldn't ask for a better sixth man, especially a freshman sixth man, the way he's able to come off the bench and really light it up from downtown. It's really something special. He's going to have a very, very bright career for Drexel. So it's White, who's also freshly checked into the ball game, to Curtis. Curtis looking for some help from Wells. Wells over to Parker. Back to Wells. Wells goes to his left. He can't find any opening, so Parker misfires and it's a rebound from Fouch bit of a long one so Fouch is gonna look to push goes up and he is fouled good drive there by Chris Fouch these guards for Drexel really know how to drive to the paint get their fouls and get their way to the foul line and that's really been a key for Drexel all season long is these these smaller point guards or guards essentially getting into the paint and getting themselves to the foul line able to convert some of these free throws so Fouch will step to the line 80% on the season that foul went against Matt Parker. It's the third of the half already on JMU. Nice touch from Chris Fouch. He's really a complete player. He really is. He's a great ball handler. He knows how to get into the lane, and that's only going to improve as he evolves in his career here. As we said, just a freshman, but can't say enough. We were up in Philadelphia towards the first of the year. We got to see him really light it up, 19 points against Virginia Commonwealth on a bunch of three-pointers. And he really, really had a good ball game. And he's continued to do it all season long. Miscommunication in the backcourt from JMU between Denzel Bowles and Pierre Curtis. And I think Matt Brady would tell you that Pierre is the man who should be controlling that ball in the backcourt. It's going to be Wells now in the front court. Dumps it off to Bowles. Bowles is working against Evan Niesler. Just checked in the ball game. And it's going to be Curtis from long range. And he finally connects. So Pierre Curtis with his first bucket of the game. It's a tray. So JMU draws within four. Thomas from Harris swings it off to Fouch. And I guess this is kind of the moment where we're anxiously awaiting Chris Fouch's first bucket. As the ball's going to go the other way now, offensive foul there working against Evan Niesler. Evan Niesler battling down low, just got caught with a little bit of a cheap run away from the ball. 
got to be smarter than that in a close ball game early on like this. Can't have your